tightness and tardiness, but she did not change much. She wanted to be placed in her rightful position. Eventually, the position opened up in the category she was wishing for. Sonia was excited, and finally she would be promoted into that position and her earnings would increase. The manager requested her nomination for the position. Her name came up, but when we saw the complaints that had been filed against her at the last week, mm -hmm. she was rejected. The position was given to another fellow, who was the diploma holder who was known for exceptional work. Although she left, although he left her entitled to that assignment. Hello. The excellence is not up to every or every distinguished thing. Sonia wanted to make when she did not go. I just want to show you something. Hi, I know Joe. Thank you for joining. I just want to show you something. It's so late, and DSA, Pastor Sunday, is still working, and they're still going strong. He's still going strong. A lot of people have already given up. They've already left. Uh, the staff here, the PAs, uh, the guests, they've all given up, and he's still working. And obviously, the person that's working with him directly this evening, he has to continue as well. So, I just let more people join us. I'm tired, you can tell from my voice. And, uh, but I just want to show you what's going on here. They never stop. There's no way to avoid poverty apart from hard work. Faith, prayers, fasting, etc. will not prevent you. That's the gesture. The person from the the and parents. It's all in the Bible. You may fast and pray, so seeds. These are very good, but when you but when you are done, get up and walk hard and Everyone walk along in the area see? of your calling or else you will be poor. Let's see what God says about laziness or poverty. The book of Proverbs in the Bible says a lot about laziness and the rest and the resultant poverty. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Last Proverbs chapter 10 standing. verse 4. Lazy hands will lead to poverty, but diligent hands will lead to wealth and riches. A person who disdains work and prefers to live a life of laziness and pleasure will never be rich. Whoever loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17. The lazy love pleasure but hate work. They prefer their bed and their bench to work. Although they may sleep soundly at the beginning, when hunger and lack creeps in open them, they will wake up and beg. I know I said I'm not coming back today, but I just want to seize the opportunity to show you that work goes on for at least 12 hours here. We started at 11 this morning and it's now for the past 11 here in Ukraine and work is still going and I'm not sure what time we'll finish. I'm extremely tired but you know um, a few people have left already gone to their rooms or gone home and we have DSA still standing, we have Pastor Joshua still standing and we have Paris. But Paris took, took a break so um, I took a break as well because I was really tired. So I um, just want to show you. I'll ask them some questions later. <laughs> I know, I know, Joe, you should know, yes. Yes, they serious work ethics. Absolutely. Yes, yes. A day, Omala, hi, hi. Hi, Paris. Hi, hi Paris. Here's Paris. Can you see how tall he is? <laughs> Light sword. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Hi, Paris. Hi. Just want to ask you um, how long have you been working today? How many hours? Oh, um, I started at 7. 7. And it's right now it's 11. 11 20. And I came late. Hi, Bola. Hi, Dixon. I didn't even start from the beginning. But you started work from but seven. I started at seven. Yes. Okay. Um, Perez, can you introduce yourself? I, yeah. I wanted to introduce him, but why why can't he introduce himself? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Perez Adelaja, son of Pastor Sunday Adelaja, his firstborn. I'm 19 years old, currently in university, studying law with business finance. Okay. Where um, do you study, Perez? I studied at the University of Buckingham in the UK. Okay. I'm currently on holiday visiting my family and attending our church anniversary just next week. Okay. Right. Um, Perez, tell us what you learned today uh, with the session because you took a lot of the reading. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you learned and, you know, something you remember from the book. 
Yeah, so today Do you we... want to sit down first? Oh, uh, yeah, nice. sure. Today, the book I read most was about work, about how work is our greatest invention. And here, my dad outlines the importance of work, the myth of people's attitude towards work, and how we should really view work. And for me, it was really interesting because it's, it's almost common knowledge that people don't like to work. But then he placed a distinguish between your job and your work because he said that your job is what you do in order to just get by, in order to supply for your family. But your work is actually what your passion is for. And he gave us a good example with that you don't see many billionaires like just going and spending, just lying down at the beach in the Caribbean, just doing nothing. You always see that these billionaires and millionaires, they're always working, they're always getting more money. And he said that this is because this is actually their work. They're doing something that they're passionate about and they, that they love. This is not their job, which they're idle about, which they realize they don't like. But he also said that we should not despair if we realize that we are just at the job stage, that we should hone our skills and make sure that we have our talents, that we're passionate for something. And that if you do find it, you'll be able to go on to your work and then you'll be able to work nonstop. You won't even think about food. You won't think about money. You will just be thinking about how to work and how you can continue working. Wow. Perez, that was like a, a total account of like <laughs> key points from the book. Yeah. So I'm amazed that you remembered everything. I know you were reading half of the session, but remembering and also putting them into a nutshell for mm. people to understand what it's about. Yes. Um, that's a total quick summary yep. of what the book is about. And it's, it's a will, I'm looking forward to the book. Mm -hmm, um, so do you remember what the title of the book is? Yes, if I believe it's work, God's best invention, or your God work, best invention. Absolutely. Something yes. Along yes. those lines. Yes, yes. Work, best God, in, best God's invention. Best God's yeah, invention. invention. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'll just read out just to say hello to people yeah, that have joined us. Um, I've got here, let's see. Hi, Anu Joe again. Orez Palogun. Um, hi, Dixon. Olaya Dixon. Uh, Bola, hello. How are you? Dare Ade. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, Gloria Adeniyi. Uh, Ade Banjo, thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, Perez, what else would you like to share with um, the people now? You know, it's a vlog, so I just grabbed um, Perez. He's not really prepared, but again, he's always prepared. <laughs> so, what else would you like to share with people, you know, about our work ethics here and okay. what we do? Because it's a good topic where we're talking about work and you know the title of the book is about work as well and the importance of work and why we should value work and disting distinguish between work and jobs you've explained that to uh, the viewers right now but um what do you have to say you know personally about work and your own point of view okay um well work is yeah, usually you think of work as your job where you go to start at 9 and at 5, you just do what you have to do to survive, you just wait for Friday where you have your weekend and you're not working. But just being with my dad around that, he's just by being next to him, you understand sort of the wisdom that not even full of it, but if you're able to grasp just a little bit, then you're already, you're able to like change your mindset. And his mindset is that He's always working for people, for God, and he loves it. He doesn't hate it because I don't think he'd be able to go for so long if he hated what he was doing. And I think that's the most important thing, that you need to love what you're doing. And because when you love something, you'll be able to do it quite easily. And my dad talks about love sometimes as the strongest motivator in the world because you can seriously, you can do anything for love. You can do anything with love. Because if you have love in your heart, it's your greatest weapon and you can use it to inspire yourself to the greatest unimaginable lengths. And if we apply it to this sphere of work, if we, and he gives good examples of people who just 
maybe lock their doors on Monday thinking, let me just get through this quick project. And then a few days later, they haven't eaten, they haven't slept, they've just been working, working this whole time. And they don't even realize where the time's gone. They haven't been hungry, they haven't needed to do anything else. They were just working, working. And that's because of the love that they have towards their, towards their work. And it is true that it's rare for many people to, for their work to be the same as their job. Because many people, maybe they go through the process of college, they have to quickly choose one subject to specialize in and then they go for it. They, then they get a job in that field. And sometimes the field is even wrong. But it's never too late to change from your job to your work. And there are many good examples of elderly people who are still able to make an impact on this world. If you think of the st person who started KFC, he, when he started, he was only 65. And only? Oh, not only. <laughs> when he was already 65, 65 yeah. when he started KFC. And when you think about it, at 65, you could already be at your pension. Yes. Like your career could already be over. Yet, I'm pretty sure most of you have already heard of KFC. It shows about how impactful he was and how widespread he was able to become. And he was able to do that because he wanted to work with people, wanted to provide them with some f source of food. And that also came from love from people. So my dad, if you're around him, you will know that you'll just be able to see that love is there and that love is the source that's behind everything. And in this case, we're talking about work. So, and that is how you're supposed to find your work. There's an interesting story that he told in the book. And I want you to share with us, if you remember. There's a story um, about church and how, you know, on a Sunday, it's classified by most religious people not to go to church. And the man that found a job, uh, even though he has a family and is married, he couldn't take the job because he had to work on a Sunday. And I think this is something that um, affects a lot of people. They think because Sunday is, you know, uh, what Sunday, Sabbath day, or, you know, it's, God says that you should rest. It means that you shouldn't work or, you know, they're doing something wrong by working. I certainly know that, you know, um, I've heard se several times where people have said in church that you're working on Sunday, just one day, you should give it to God, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, a lot of people feel guilty working on a Sunday so you know from your point of view you know as a young person as well you know how do you take that story how do you see that story yeah so the story that she's referring to is that um, there's a father of three I think and right now they're just living based off her wife's earnings and she's a part-time worker so he's desperately searching for a job he's looking he's looking then he finds a perfect job and it's what he loves it's in his field and it seems like everything is perfect but then he sees that he would have to be traveling on Sundays which he thinks that it, which would interfere with him going to church so he goes to the pastor for advice asking if he should take the job and the pastor tells him that you should not do anything that gets in the way of you going to church so because of that he refuses the job and then the fam then he they become broke, they have to sell off their assets, they can't afford their school, their children's school fees, so they have to go from private school to public school. At the end, they have to return to the village because they can't remain in the city. And I say the more of the story, I think that my dad is trying to put to the story is that the if you really have something that you're supposed to do on Sunday, that church shouldn't be the main reason yes. why you're not doing it. Yes. That just by stopping going to church doesn't mean that you're not a Christian anymore. Yes. That there's more to Christianity than going to church. And my dad paralleled it with a different story of how another person was so active, active with his family, active with his business, and that he didn't have enough time to have maintain a spiritual relationship with, with God, where he'd attend church maybe twice a month, but then he would still feel empty on the inside. And then when things would go wrong, he wouldn't be able to fix them. So his solution was not to go to more church, but it was to actually take time alone with God in solitude in order to strengthen that relationship. So the emphasis here is that Christianity is not about going to church, but it's about having your personal relationship with Christ. And if people believe that they're only going to go, that, that they're going to, 
value their Christianity off of how many church services they attend, that's a great myth that should be demystified because then it's going to make a lot of people end up in the wrong place because they won't know the right path of life. And the emphasis is that solitude with God, that you listen to Him, listen to what He tells you directly, and you do what He tells you to do, not just go to the church and listen to exactly what the pastors say. Because pastors are human as well, they're not perfect either. And they are working on this day as well. It seems a bit ironic that the pastor who told the person yeah. not to take the work. That was going to be my is, next question, that he's actually working himself. That he's working so, himself. Yeah. And just because of that, you should realize that you should be able to work both on Sunday and the Sabbath if it is towards what you love, what you need to do. Because sometimes push comes to shove, you need to make decisions. And just this won't stop your crescendo just by not attending church on Sundays. Yeah. You may attend the mid-service week on Thursday, for example. There's always ways around it. But just by not attending on Sundays, that doesn't mean you're not a Christian. Yes. Thank you, Perez. Um, one of the other points that really interests me when a uh, pastor was talking about church attendance in the book was that um, the pastors that says that you shouldn't go to, uh, go to work on a Sunday, you should leave it to God. I mean, are they not considering things like they themselves are working by being in church and preaching? And also, if um, the people that work in hospital, doctors and lawyers, they're working. What would happen if they refuse to work on a Sunday because it's um, a holy day or because God says that you shouldn't, he says somewhere in the Bible not to, to keep that day holy? But I think we um, misinterpret the word that says we shouldn't work um on the Sunday, or maybe um, uh, the Sunday is a is, is it Sabbath day? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be, but that we we are getting the uh, the meaning of that wrong, and it really makes sense to understand that. Yes, what about doctors and um, what about nurses? If they refuse to work on a Sunday, what's going to happen to people? What's going to happen to sick people? You know, so or somebody that wants to give birth, what's going to happen to them? So we really need to use our our brain, uh, you know, I, this is lack of a better word. I'm not trying to be rude, but use our head in trying in understanding uh, before we conclude. We should think about what we've been told and um, the myth that we we believe in, you know, carefully before we um, run with it, before we start uh, living our life based on, on those things. And it goes back to the analytical thinking as well, because it's absolutely right pastor is working on the day that he they sometimes they advise you not to take a job or not to work and also there's other functions that are going on that has to go on so why is it that you don't work and also about appreciating work appreciating that god is giving you a gift and you have to share that with people with work you know not job you know there's a distinction between job and work and how you can transition if you're from work at the moment to going into uh if from job to going into work so, you know, I think this is a very timely book and everyone should um, get one to try and understand. I'm not sure when it will be published, but, you know, work is in progress and it's still in progress. So we started tonight's vlog um, from, you know, we're still working over 12 hours now. I'm extremely tired and pastors still going strong, um, DSA is still going strong. And um, the person that is reading as well, he has no choice. He has to continue to read. Perez, I'm sure he's tired right now, but because he started working from 7 a.m. this morning. So I'm sure he's tired. I'm extremely tired. Let me just say hello to everyone first. Hi, Julie. Ademokun. Um, Junaid. Tatiana, hello. Olubenga, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, Ade Banjo, thank you for joining. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to go back in the other room now. I'm sure they're still working. And we'll see what they're up to. Thank you, Paris. No problem. <laughs> Guys, I told you they're still working. Can you believe this? And if her leaders understood work and promoted the lifestyle of diligence, and they would transform the nation. The so last much that Nigeria standing. would not be the other drug, instead of their nations would seek to migrate to Nigeria. Most Western countries have good work ethic. They develop their nations by hard work. They do not want to encourage a 
culture of laziness, on diligence and productivity. They see dignity in labor and are proud of what they what they worked for, not what they stole from the government. If only Nigeria could change their attitude towards work on a, on a national level, it would transform their nations like the Western countries and Asian tiger and Asian tigers did. The Asian tigers. The four Asian tigers are little dragons include the high growth economies of Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan. These four Asian countries have consistently maintained high levels of economic Hello, growth sir. since the 1960s, fueled by exports yeah. and rapid industrial Can I ask a quick question? This has enabled them to move from the third world economy yeah. okay. to join the ranks of the world's richest nations. Hong Kong and Singapore are among the biggest financial centers in the world. Why South Korea yeah, and Taiwan are important that centers of the world? They are on the clock. They have to finish well what they're the doing tonight. So I wanted to ask the question so that you guys can see what's going on. Or, you know, get understanding from their mindset. But they're in a role right now. I don't want to disturb them. Um, but just keep having a look. I'm going to wait here until they give me a chance. If you leave Joshua Hickel, bro, prepare this to come and cut it now. Okay. South Korea. South Korea. They're swapping readers. Yes. Yes. What do you need me for? Eh? Just to say, <laughs> how long are you going to do this for, sir? I wanted to know, like, it's going on. South Korea. Come over. Come over. Uh -huh. I'm taking her suggestion to her room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, guys. Pastor Josh, Hi. I know you're extremely tired. Mm -hmm. You've now been working for over 12 hours. Yeah. And um, I know that's a lot. Mm -hmm. You don't need to uh, tell me, but I would just like you to share with the people on Facebook that are interested to know how you guys do this and how often do you do this? For me, I work 18 hours every day. And then we pass the Sunday. Let's say we do this about three, four times every week. It depends on his schedule because most times he has to go to court and then he's got other engagements. Mostly court though because this is mainly what he's doing right now, which is putting his thoughts into books and trying to release as much as possible into the world so that people can have the materials necessary for them to be the best that God wants them to be. And like he said this evening, he's doing what he's doing, not just for this generation, but he's doing it for generations to come. He said he's thinking at least 300 years ahead. So whatever we're working on right now is creating a new system, is creating new thought patterns, is creating new philosophies for life and how best man can become what God really wants them to be. So we do this three, four times every week. And for me, it's like, uh, it's either I'm doing this or I'm doing something else. So it's, it's the same thing every day for me. I don't have weekends. I don't have holidays. I don't have days off. I just keep working because that's what I've learned from pastor. I've seen that it's very fruitful, it's productive. So why stop, right? Success is a lifestyle. It's not like a destination. So we just keep going no matter what. Guys, you heard that success is a lifestyle, not a destination. Right from the mouth of Pastor Joshua. Right, yeah. Pastor Joshua, I can see that you're already tired. You're extremely mm -hmm. tired. And you say that you work this seven days a week mm -hmm. there's no monday or weekends you know every day mm -hmm. if you're not doing this what you're mm -hmm. doing right now which is reading through the books mm -hmm. you're also um doing so you're on social media you do mm -hmm. he's the content manager of the social media mm -hmm. so he's constantly working at least 18 hours a day yeah okay um all right the about the topic that you're reading today can you just tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the topic and what you've learned from reading this uh all right we've walked in a couple of books today the first one we walked on had to do with prayer and then that was more of a spiritual book it was talking about the three dimensions of prayer it wasn't exactly what pastor wanted but we we, we only read a part of it and then he had to send it back to the editors to walk on it but it's it just made us to understand how important prayer is that was today right uh, it was prayer. yesterday prayer was yesterday yeah what was today I, I don't remember. For me, the days are, are now going too fast. But I know that earlier today, we, we, we dealt with one book. And, and then we had to return. And then we, we also had to return that one. And then this evening, we, we're, we're working on that. of Oh, sorry. The one that we're working on yesterday 
was that of nations. Yes. Prayer was today. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, I can see that you are also... Yeah, I'm always, I'm up to sleep already. <laughs> yeah, so it was about the three dimensions of prayer, how how we, we pray, and it was debunking a lot of religious beliefs about prayer. Basically, we're, we're people who, in Africans, those of you who are Africans will understand me, in Africa, we pray a lot, but we don't have a lot of results. Surprisingly, um, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Jesus prayed a lot, and we saw that he had a lot of results to go with it. And every other person in the history of the Bible, Elijah, whoever it is you want to pick up on, they had tremendous results that affected their nations, that affected the sphere of every sphere of government, that affected the entire society. But for some reason, our own prayers in Africa does not seem to go outside of the church. It doesn't seem to really change a lot. But from this book, we're going to begin to see why that is and how to fix that problem. So that was that book. That's the main idea of the book anyway, to help break down the dimension of prayer and how we're supposed to go about it. Okay. And then, um, I think you're like, I'm beginning to reason that it's my arm in yesterday. Okay, but then this it was yesterday, but was you yesterday. did two books yesterday as well. Yeah, so. two books yesterday and then two books today. Yeah. And then this evening, we're, we're talking about work, the importance of work. And the title of this book, should I tell them the title of the book? Well, Perez told us the title. I also okay. repeated the title, so you could do it. Oh, great. Too. Yeah, so we're talking about work and the fact that it's better than vacation. So that's not something that we're, we're used to. So we're getting new and in your understanding of work we're understanding how important work is we're beginning to understand um why god actually put work in place and then we're also debunking religious beliefs that have stood for years for decades that has made us to feel like work is negative work is something that is burdensome work is something that we shouldn't love but we're beginning to see that in the real sense god created work to make sure that we can actualize ourselves we can build on our potentials can actually mine. I feel like um, from the book, it's clear that work is like the mining process that you that you have to go through to get the treasures out of yourself. Wow. You know, when you go to wow. a, the a mining mine process, that's, yeah. that's a really good so analogy. When, when you work, just like the, they do physically, when they work physically and then they have to drill, for you as an individual, for you to really discover who you are and get out all the, the abilities, potentials, gifts and talents that you have, for you to fully harness them, you have to work. That's just the only thing. Every single thing that we're enjoying today in the world is as a result of someone's hard work. If it, the light that is in your room is as a result of someone's hard work, the clothes you're putting on is because somebody worked hard. Wow. The, 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 the hair you have on your head is because somebody worked hard to come up with that style. So every single thing that you look at and admire is because someone decided to work. Some people have not even seen anything like what you have today, but they just decided to go into their minds and then dig deep into how into their creative you know atmosphere and then they came up with what you have so it's a really awesome book i like it a lot it's helping to re-energize and reinforce my my passion for work because i didn't grow up you know with the thinking crazy hours were good i thought just eight hours was good i grew up with the mindset that look you just need to do the, the least minimum. work you know and then pray and expect maximum result but I'm beginning to see that I'm going to pray as much as I work. And then I'm seeing that there are different kinds of work as well. You've got the mental work, you've got the physical work, you've got the spiritual work. And that's what makes you a holistic person. You meet people who spiritually are sound, but mentally they are not. You meet people who mentally are sound, but spiritually and physically they are not. You meet people who physically they are like gods. They are like Greek gods. You know, they are well chiseled out and all. But when you talk to them, there's almost nothing in their heads because mentally they've got nothing. And then spiritually, they know nothing about God. They've got no relationship with God. So spiritually, they're bankrupt. But that's not the way we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live lives that are holistic. We're supposed to be able to have the mental, the physical. But at the end of the day, you cannot do everything in the same proportion. You have to focus on what is best for you. For instance, as a pastor, I'm going to be focusing more on spiritual and mental. I could do physical because it's going to be an added advantage. When a pastor looks good, it helps you know, to get yeah. the message out there. So at the end of the day, I'm not going to spend... It helps to get the message out there. <laughs> yeah. you gotta, Guys. You look good. So if you're, if, for instance, I'm not going to put in the same physical work that an Olympian is going to put into themselves. So Zimbo had to work extraordinarily hard because he's an athlete. I'm not going to put in the same work amount of physical work as Zimbo because that's not my sphere. So I'm going to have to work on something else. So work is awesome. Work is something that we're supposed to do. This book is really a revolutionary stuff. It's going, to, it's going to change people's minds. Like anyone who reads this book is going to be blown away. I don't care who you are 
or what you think you know so far this book has so many truths in it it's heavily loaded and it's really coming to change the way we look at work especially africa it's coming to change the entire paradigm and i'm really excited for it i don't know when it's going to be out we're, we're still working on it but i believe that when it comes out it's going to transform our lives especially people in church i have passion for christians we're really underperforming in this generation and it's not supposed to be so but with books like this i feel like we're going to really be able to do great stuff especially with the millennials with the younger generation we've got a lot of work to do because we've been given a lot of junk by the previous generation by our parents and it's not it's no fault of theirs really it's not like they're bad people or they wanted to give us you know all of this erroneous teachings they thought it was the best way yes, to bring us they up. lived by it as well yeah they lived by it and they got some results but if we're really going to be on top of the world and if we're going to control the world if we're going to really take over spheres of society and change nations for god and really become sons that will dominate and daughters that will be people that the world will look up to these are the kind of teachings that we need to imbibe these are the principles we need to live by and i feel like if we can do that there's nothing that's going to stop us if another bible is going to be written our names will be in it wow we'll make history yeah so guys you heard it right happening. from the mouth of pastor joshua wow <sighs> Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. It was nice talking to you guys. It's going so, back to work now, so yeah, I've still got um about yeah, I'm still going to be working for the next three hours. So you guys should take care. Have a good night. Mm. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jay. Yeah, thank you, my one. Okay, okay. Okay, right That's the second person. Let's change the title. We won't be talking about the great invention for you, and tonight I've announced you know, a notice to us that we need to change the title of Jubilee. And this is the Jubilee. Labeled better than favor. Simple is a full paragraph. Yes. It's going to be a long, uh, kind of two two sided title like that. Why work is better than vacation. Labor better than favor. So it's not going to be a full stop. No, it's going to be. Yes, especially labor better than favor because I've heard so many times where um, one day of favor is better than <laughs> labor. Right, um, just so you've been working now for over, uh, it's now about going to 14 hours. So, and I know the topic you're working on is about work. So just a few words about work. And, um, this is the one we're working on now. We worked on another one in the morning. And that one was about Nigeria. So I was uh, working on the book that is called. I don't know if my voice is my voice cannot be no, loud anymore. No, it can't be loud, but it's okay. I think people can hear you. They will say if they can't hear you. Okay, so I was working in the morning on a book that is called. Uh, How Nigeria economy can overtake America's economy. Yes, that's what we're trying to remember. Okay, and then we gave it the second title. Mm -hmm. What was the second title that we gave it today? We gave it another title apart from that one. Why corruption is killing Nigeria? How? How? How, how, how corruption, corruption is killing Nigeria? 
and how to kill it. And, and how to kill it. Oh, it is time to kill, kill it. Time to kill it, yeah. 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 Our, our corruption is killing Nigeria. Uh, it is time to kill it. It is time to kill it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that is still going to be a long way to come because we are just on the first stage of work that on that book. So that is a long a long time to come. I think I will plan to release that one towards Nigeria's independence. Okay. Uh, but right now, mm, we just finishing work on one of the books that will come out. One of the twenty five books that I want to release before my 50th birthday. And by the grace of God, I think I will try my best to even do more than 25 books for my 50th yeah. birthday. But the problem will be how you people will read them. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm going to release as much as possible. Uh, because many people used to complain that, do I have more books, more titles in English? Yeah. Now I'm going to have too many. I'm going to have so many of them mm -hmm. in English. So nobody will ever have an excuse or any reason to say uh, we don't have that book. We don't have that book. When I just started doing uh, live broadcast before, uh, we used to, I used to mention different books and people used to say, oh, we don't have that. We get that. We get that. Now you don't have that. You will not have that problem anymore. So after my 50th birthday, I want to release at least 25. That will be the least. If God empowers me and if I'm God, you know, God gives me the grace, um, I might do more than 25. Okay. And uh, so we'll have enough books for Pastor Sunday in English that, uh, yeah, that, you know, any topic people will be interested in it will be there for them so um today the one we just finished working on is like you just heard it yes yes um so i just want to ask you as well and share with the viewers right now that what's the driving force of the, for this for all this because you work you work extremely long hours and um to me it just seems like extreme I, I i'm learning from but the the 14 hours that you saw me working here today is what you saw that's what i did in this room yeah in this particular place but what about the one i do in my place before i came here i'd work for four hours yeah but what's the drive what's the driver what's the driving force maybe you know if we have it as well but we haven't harnessed it you can kind of give us what their driving force is and maybe we can look into ourselves to find out if we have it or not Okay, I'm not going to talk about the religious and other reasons, but let me just give you one that is very practical and that is very, uh, that is, uh, that is a very, no, a very uh, latent one for me today, right now. The reason, mm. a, or even potent one, is the fact that I only have one life to live. And that's a big problem. Me, you want more than one life? Yeah, that's a big problem for me because <laughs> I have too many to give in one life. Hmm. So for me to be able to uh, maximize that one life, I must work like every day to make sure that uh, every day uh, I am living a full life. So I want to do in a day what some people don't do in a whole life. Wow. Okay. Especially after I'm 50. So now that I'm 50 years old, it's even more present and it's even more uh, vivid why I have to even work harder. So at 50 and after 50, I plan to work harder. And my goal now will be to do in a day what other human beings don't do in seven, in 50 years or 70 years in a lifetime so i want to do in a day now that's going that's my next target that's my next my, my next sketch my next uh target yeah. my next goal yeah so you're setting a goal to do in one day in 24 hours what people don't do in a lifetime yeah 
you've lived a whole lifetime. You've yeah. not done what I did today alone. Yes, that's true. I haven't written a book. <laughs> yes, that's a good point. However, sir, I still want to know what it is inside of you that is driving that. You're saying... The what is driving that? What, what I just said. No, what? You, you said that you want to do what people um, are not able to achieve. No, no, that's just, that's just like, that's just a goal. But that's what is driving me. I had said it before I said your, that. Your age, because you're almost 50? No, that's just explanation. I'd, the very, very first thing I said, where were you? I was here, right in front of you. Yes, because I only have a one, one life, life, just like you two. But I have one life. I don't feel this. Because you are this. not thinking. Because you are not a thinking being. Well, I'm trying yeah. to think, and I can't really if find you, it in me. Because you, if you think, you will think forward. The thinking is not just about thinking about what has happened in the past, or thinking about what is what is happening now. You are able to examine yourself if you are a thinking person or not in regards to how you think in regards to the future okay. so how much you are able to think about future and plan for that future and make decisions based on the thought of the future is actually what determines if you are a thinking person or not so if you are not thinking about how to maximize the future mm. then you are not thinking you are not a thinking person I think and I'm because getting it slowly. It becomes, yes, if you are a thinking person and you realize what I realize, and what I realize is that thinking forward, that I'm not going to be here soon. And if I'm not going to be here soon, even if you are 10 years old now, you are not going to be here soon. Even if you are 20, you are soon not going to be here. Hmm. Your time is passing by. So then you realize that I must be in a hurry to accomplish the goal while I'm here, I begin to realize that every day that I'm given is an opportunity to maxim, to accomplish maximum. Hmm. Okay. So that is that alone is enough to drive not just me but anybody. Yes, they, but they have to know their goal, their purpose first. So if you don't realize that the urgency of life itself, then you might be spending that life on frivolities on tr uh, trivialities like uh you know joking laughing watching movies or doing things that don't benefit hmm. but yeah. uh but today you think i've just only uh written a book but i've not just written a book today apart from writing a book today i've also uh you know put some plans in place f for the transformation of nigeria uh, especially for the industrialization of Nigeria. Mm. And you people will not even, you, those are the things that you are not even aware of, mm. but that I am doing without, uh, that other people might not even be aware of. So I'm doing a lot of other things that you don't even see. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I hope that this is my answer at least make you begin to think well, why I push myself so hard. It will give me a uh, sleepless night. In what sense? Uh, in the sense that I, I don't feel like I care much about what happens after I'm gone. And I think Look, you're even... You going? Well, you, you're talking about, you're thinking about the future. Yeah. You know, and I think... So if you don't care much about what happens after you are gone, that is another proof that you don't think. Exactly, but that's what I'm saying, that I don't have it in me. I'm trying to look for these things. And the difference is that you have that, that in you. That is just an evidence of a person that lacks thinking capacity. Yes, I put my hands up. I think that I really don't think... To say that you don't care for what happens after you are gone. No, I don't. So, to be honest, I'm going to start thinking about it, but... Right now, I feel like I don't really care enough to be doing, to be driven in the way that you're driven. I care about now, I care about here, maybe um, the next year or two, and the things that I need. I don't care about what I leave. You know, I haven't really think, I haven't really thought in depth, you know, what is the future 
when I'm not here? What can I leave behind? You okay, know? let's think about what you care about. Yeah. What you said you care about right now is about what is happening to me right now, yeah? What's yes. happening to you right now? Yes. Okay, what is happening to you right now? You wake up in the morning, mm. you feel good, you want to feel good. Mm. That's just about feeling. Yeah. So that's why you eat, mm. that's why you dress, you paint your face, mm. you do make your hair mm -hmm. look nice. Everybody say, hey, 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 and you're happy, hey, hey, hey. But in the next one hour, something goes wrong you've forgotten the good you just felt just yes, now. yes exactly. so it is not what i feel now that last yeah. it is not what benefits me at, at, at the end of the day <laughs> and it is not what benefits the world around me <laughs> so what i feel right now what's going on with me right now is already past <laughs> everything that we see right now or we're ex experiencing right now is in the past already it's gone so it's no more benefiting me. The best that could benefit me is just if I remember some good memory. But you don't even remember most of the good memories. Okay, the way you've just, what you just said now, mm. that you care only about how you feel now and maybe one or two years uh, uh, yeah. from now. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't even care about the one or two years from now. Really, you care right. mainly about now. Yeah. Okay, that is how you have lived up to now. Yeah. Okay, now you are, let's say you are 30 years old. But when you are 20 years old, you talk just like that. And you are caring, when you are 20 years old, you are caring about how you felt, how you looked that time. So what is it that you, what, where is that? Where are all those, tw between 20 and 30 years. Okay. So for, that, for 10 years of your life, you talk like that, that what was important is how I feel now. So what is, where is it? What, what is, where is the product for those years? What, can, what did that produce for you? It did not produce anything for you. It only produced for you good feelings at that time mm -hmm. so where is the feeling now give me the feeling mm -hmm. you don't even remember it anymore mm -hmm. you don't even have that feeling you don't even remember how it felt tell me all the good things you did between 20 and 30 where are the all the very good things you invested your life in and show me the results right now maybe you have having boyfriends mm -hmm. so where are the boyfriends would you maybe you are, were in love so where is the love where is the love? What is love? Feelings. Just you know, uh, euphoria. Just uh, mi you know, oh. mirage. Illusion. So maybe you fell. Don't say you used to go, maybe drive around the city and tell your friends, who who is no good looking, who he said he loves me. Oh, yeah. who, 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 ah. So where are they now? It's nowhere to be found. Even those who are married and have children, where is the thing they were all talking about driving and all the talk? Where give me the product? Don't tell me about those children, about husband and wife, because you are miserable even with the husband and wife and the children. And those children, they will not even remember you in two hundred years time, because they would themselves so will not be here. Hmm. So anything that you have, the only thing that is beneficial is when you are bringing things from the future into now. Your ability to look into the future, to see into the future, and to bring things from there now, those are the things that will outlive you. And they are the things that will keep on benefiting the world after you. I don't know if, if, yes. I'm, if, I, if, if you have... If I've taken it above you. To yeah. be truthful, tell me the truth. I think I think you took it above me, okay. but it's something that I need to um, work on and replay and understand in more depth. I understand that in terms of thinking, I'm not thinking about the future. Even being here and now, I'm not really here and now. And the future that is more important, the imagination, the creation, the creating as a human being, I'm not really doing that right now. But... You've given me, um, it's not even food for thought. You've given me kind of uh, a solution to... Look, let me give you a real solution now. Yeah. real solution is this. Yeah. The only people who are remembered for time and eternity, not just for time, yeah, but for eternity also, are not people who feel good now. And there are not people who even give birth to children. They are people who lived not for themselves who don't who don't care who care less about what they feel there are people who sacrifice themselves and convert themselves into this into a seed 
that they sow into the future as a seed now because when you sow a seed it becomes harvest it becomes a tree and harvest in the future it is people who convert themselves into seeds that live as a forest for the rest of for, for eternity for time and eternity so that what that means is that people all the people who have lived for themselves through ages they are not remembered but you remember the greats the shakespeare's you know the alexander the great you know Matidonsky, the great, you know you remember all the great great people who lived their lives as sacrifice who sacrificed themselves for others so so there are two ways for you to be remembered for time i mean three ways for you to be remembered for time and eternity one you've got to live a sacrificial life you know turning yourself into a seed sow your life it is when you sow your life for others like that that you are remembered you, you might not have children in the physical but you'll be remembered by generations to come mm -hmm. but when you live just for your own feeling good and having children or even your own children your descendants grand grand they will not remember you but when you don't have children but you sow yourself as a seed because of the forest and the harvest the forest will be there forever and that is what people remember. They will remember you. Generations will remember you. Now, that's number one. You need to sacrifice, sow yourself, turn your life into a living sacrifice, and just give people. Anyway, just let me say, let me say it just more roughly. When you live for other people, when you live <coughs> for other people, and for, yeah, when you give your life as an offering for others, that's when you are remembered. Number two, you are remembered when you have discovered your assignment on the earth, your your mission on the earth. Like for example, people like uh, mm. Thomas Edison might not be born again, maybe he didn't, uh, but he discovered his calling. Tesla, um, you know, Newton. But they, you might not say they live for people or so, but they live in the laboratories. George Washington Carver. They live for their vision. But whatever they live for in their vision, they give, gave their lives as well, sacrificing their lives in exchange for their vision. They gave their lives in exchange. They sacrificed their lives for their vision, for their purpose. So when they totally give themselves out uh, for the purpose, they are also li they live for life and eternity as well. Mm -hmm. Number three category of people that live for time and eternity are the people that live for the invisible future. People that live to make the future possible. Those are the inventors. Those are the people who see things that other people don't see. Those are the people who, who, who live for the things that are not temporal. But they live for things that are to come. You know, because all the things that are temporal, I mean, that are physical are temporal. Or they live for things that are not physical. They saw things in the spirit. Those are men of faith. Those are the great men of God. The great men of faith they are able to see things into the spirit and they live to bring those things to the reality today so even after they are gone they are working people like steve jobs so, you know they are bringing things from the future to the present they live to be remembered as well so there are three things for you to do to be remembered. what are your friends saying there who are they yeah. people out there? lots of people are feeling sorry for me because i even venture into asking you the question so um hi everybody um Olori Shegun, julia ngoya um somebody saying discover your calling in life and also live for the invisible future that's what you just said um we have somebody else say live a sacrificial life uh we have another person say ajide you um maybe replying to jude D dsa is a whole is a whole lot uh, it's jumping, hold on. DSA is a whole different level of passion. It is, uh, I want to read this one, it's jumping up and down. Um, kudos to Maya White, it takes uh, to, sh to share this and, you know, live on Facebook. Um, Maya. That's why you must not allow religion or people's opinion or culture or, you know, your tradition to tie you down into some little things. Mm. So those three things must be more significant to you than religion or church 
or what this one pastor said is this, that, this, that. Don't let anybody cage you. Live for destiny. Live for eternity. Live for time. What, what were you saying you wanted to read? Um, I wanted to read somebody saying that you're on a different level entirely to um, the rest of us human beings, really. Um, another person saying that, ha ha, I'm in trouble. <laughs> the person said, ha ha, why are you in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying it's true, actually. <laughs> He's on another level from human, from normal folks around. Mm. The, so, the facts speak it, his results speak it. The things he has done, um, not many people have been able to do it anywhere in history. So we're making history right here, right now. Huh. And what he's doing is... But I'm explaining what I'm, what I'm doing. Yeah, that's, that's another beautiful thing I like about what he does. He yeah. breaks everything down and he makes it applicable so you can also do it. So there's no mysterious or there's no mystique about this whole process. Yes. It's very clear what needs to be done, and uh, if you can discipline yourself to do it, you have the same result. Yes, you have Judy saying that those teaching moments with Pete Pastor Sunday are just gold. The best moments with him. I hope we're putting it into practice. Um, find something we're dying for is the best thing for. Do is the best thing to do the best in your life. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've had fifty comments so far. Um, somebody else saying that's true. But uh, I feel like I understand what she's saying, that she's okay. not there yet. Okay, what do you mean? Because what, what you're saying right now took years to build. Yeah. It, took, it, took, it took studying, it took praying, it took so you are a lot of... Yeah, so when she says she's not there, I can completely get it. Because what she, she's hearing from you right now, she can hear the words, she can see the passion... But she cannot really connect with it because no. she hasn't put in the same amount of work to number one discover herself to build on your knowledge because you know knowledge is what makes you aware is what makes you to really come alive there's nobody who can be here and now without knowing what they're doing without having you know that bank of knowledge on the inside of you because it's what you know that will control the way you think and what you do so without having that you will hear the words you will know they are true but you will not really be able to live in it. And that's why, that's the place of solitude. And that's you also mentioned that, sir. You said that it's what you that. know. You said right from the beginning, it's because of what you know already. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's part of your driving force because you know this. Yeah, so he's been living and this way for years. It, it didn't just start today. So you have to start somewhere. You have, to, like told you previously today, you say it's coming back again. So I think God is really trying to tell you something. You need to go get, you need to separate yourself. Have your own days of solitude. Take the book you've been reading on Who Am I? Really look deep into yourself and start building on what it is that you're really passionate about. Because everybody knows that you need to live for something. You, there's, there has to be something you're willing to die for. But how many people are doing it? It takes time. It takes work. That's part of what we're talking about. I don't today. know if the they know. Work, I think they, the they, spiritual work. Really, they all know. They know Mandela died for something. They like him. Yeah, but they, they know think... Martin Luther King died for something. They celebrate his his day. In but what she is saying that you are on another level too. Yeah, so at least you are on the level of those who know. <laughs> this is but just she theory. is saying that it's... there are a lot of other people like her who don't mm -hmm. even know they are supposed to live for something. Yes. Oh, yeah? That what she was saying that there are people like her in the whole world here. Who don't know? Who don't even know that who am I? That they never even ask themselves the question, who am I? Well, that's and why what am I here? On. That's what we're working on. That's what we've got the book. That's why you have the blog. But she said there are people like that who never even thought about it. Yeah, it's true. Yes, but people are. But I never even knew there are people who so, didn't think about that. People even I just, give, I just thought that people are asking themselves the question only they don't know. So I don't want to help them to know. But she is saying there are people who never even thought about it. Yes. That's good. It shows that they... I never thought about it. Yeah. And I'm not the uh, only one. It shows that she has a passion for those people. So get going. There's a lot of... There's a more so do you think the majority of people are people who never thought about it? Yes. I think maybe 99% of people haven't thought about but that But she question. knew at least that you are supposed to live for something. Yes, but I guess No, that's, because you were that's... told that you're supposed to live for something. Exactly. But you don't I grew up in an environment where I saw my, like my dad, he was living for, for something. He was living for people. I could see that he spent more time outside the house than he did in the house talking to I and my, my siblings. <coughs> so I knew that there was something that went beyond just, you know, the normal job of nine to five and stuff because he, sometimes he never, he was never around. You know, the way it is, you travel 
Perez is here, he can testify to how much of he of you he was seen back in the day. So I, I already knew. So people like that would never that, had that. Kind no, of if you if you don't grow up in that environment, even if it comes to your mind that what is the meaning of life, just the fact that nobody else is asking that question or there are no <laughs> answers <laughs> around, you will just brush and, it around and be yeah, like, yeah. Oh, and after about after Labi Victor says, millions of people are ignorant of their purpose. So it's not. It's not millions. Let's make that billions. Billions, yeah, me. because it's Let's billions. Make that billions. I, yeah, I have. But Perez, for example, the reason why this is very strange to me, Perez, are you there? Yep. Is that I have kids, and my kids are small. But from when he's been six years old or eleven years old, and Per and Zoe, Pearl, they didn't know even they didn't, they couldn't describe it what they were going to, you know, be. But they knew they were going to be some something. So for me, even if my kids, as as little as six year old parents, Paul, Zoe, they had already known that they were here to become something, to change the world, to impact the world. They already knew that even before they knew their name. Yes. So I was thinking, I was thinking, ah, are there human beings in this old? World? How can they be grown up? I'm not talking to six year old people. I'm talking about 30, 40, 50, and they don't even know they are going to be here for them. Yes. That, is that not strange to you? You tell, you know, tell <laughs> the parents. The parents. Well, He's just 19. Sir, but to be fair, they probably saw that from you, and you brought, them, you brought them up in that yeah, way. You know, I, my parents, when I was young, because I'm, I'm quite nurturing, they would just say, Dr. Ah, my wife is a doctor, whatever. But they didn't put anything in me to no, harness that. Do you know there are people in this world that don't even know they are supposed to be here for anything? Let it hear, parents. What does, oh. Is not that just shocking? I always thought that at one point in their life, everybody is still like asked the question. You know, well, at what point? Maybe when I, thought, was I always thought it was during like college. I thought it was like just natural. latest yeah. college latest because that's like you know you grow, you leave your family, you go into like you start studying, then you're like. Oh, Yo, but I think like, the reason why it doesn't happen to people in college is that some people go to college just to so that Please. they will get a job, mm. and also to please your so parents. So people connect. You are connecting job. To whatever you want to be, mm -hmm. to who you want to be. That's why you went to college, and that's why you go to college for. Yeah. Okay. That's what parents went to college for. So we went to college because of who we know you will be, mm -hmm. not because of prestige or salary or anything, but because of college. But nobody ever. Most people no. don't do that. Yeah. No. Most people go to college like even undeclared. Like they don't know what major they're studying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's not possible. No, it's very I've possible. I've never even had that one before. Yes, I, I changed my, my major. Oh, have day. you had that, that before? Yes. <laughs> yes. They don't know their major. They just go in there and then they're telling they you to do yes. general classes. No, yeah. I'm not even talking major. I'm even talking about. So if people don't know major, why should I even be talking about purpose? Yeah. We no, do. you're far away from me. You're way ahead. <laughs> Let's you go to college, don't right. know your major. You mm -hmm. don't for the first year, the first couple yeah. of years at least. They're like first still trying to years, figure it out. She yes. make it. Yes, it's true, sir. <laughs> no, what you've done for them, they might not even understand what it is. Ooh. But the, the children, the children. And, and the likes. Because in Nigeria, you don't get these lessons. I, I, I was privileged to go to a school where the elites where kids from of the elites were and they, and don't know. they don't know they've just been told by their and parents that, that this is what you will okay, study you've got to be an engineer you've got to be a doctor, doctor. you've got to be a lawyer this were the most this were the three most predominant stuff and to them they felt like that was prestigious and when their parents came around their parents were politicians wealthy businessmen and women and very successful people but they never told their kids about purpose they never told their kids about what's mm -hmm. really your talent mm -hmm. and what do you really have an inclination for yes. many of these parents feel that because they, they're successful they need to drive their children's lives as well yes. in a certain direction so that they too can be successful, successful and be respected in society mm -hmm. so nobody talks about purpose or stuff like that is is it's is new I so think let's hear into the end so what, what's your own thinking about that that people don't you know that, that's shocking i think well it definitely is weird because even just growing up with the family, going to a private Christian school where you're just taught that everybody has a purpose, that you're just going to college, you're going to college knowing what you want to do, you're going to college to get the degree, to get like a job, and the fact that some people just live their whole lives not knowing what they're doing is a bit odd. It's almost like, have you even reached this place? Have you even gotten so far? 
That because that they, people, because people you grow, you know, because people grow up biologically, but without their own input, like instinct. Almost. Yeah, yeah, just instinct, just like what I call biomass. And mm. people just wake up in the morning, and every day you wake up, you grow older. That's how they got to where they are, just by sleeping and waking up. It, they didn't even pull program, so they didn't. They do, people live on daily basis without connecting with their smart senses or their yeah, mind. Like, that just seems. Almost inhumane. Yeah, that's why I'm always saying people who are biomass, they are not yet human. That's why I always say either you are a biomass or you are a personality. And people think that I'm abusing people. I'm not. You are only humane when you begin to think. In fact, in a day, you only you are only human to the amount of minutes that you spend being here now consciously. When you do things that just like Autom automated, you are not humane that time. Mm. So it's a shocking thing that people are here on the earth. Many. They don't even know that's what we have for them. Many people. Yes. And so I'm, I'm being be sober right now. <laughs> Um, Olayemi Ola says, I think the environment has made some people and destroyed most people. Uh, somebody said very correct, sir. Um, Topsy, Deborah said very correct, sir. Topsy said, people like us that nobody told us about purpose, even though I gave it a thought when I was growing up, but nobody told me, so I had no direction on how to discover purpose. <sighs> I, but I don't know what is happening in England. A lot of people that I've met in England are just like you, Bayoa. Yes. I don't understand that. Yes, because um, we don't think about purpose. We think about, for Job. me, yeah, and what is trending at the time. You know, we don't we don't align things to our own gift and purpose. It's what is happening. You know, I was in banking because yeah, there's money in banking, and then. <laughs> But when I when I was working banking, I wasn't happy. I was I just felt like it's really doggy doggy kind of world, and people are just not humane, like you just mentioned now. And I was not happy. And even when I wanted to leave, and I was complaining you to people, you'll never be happy anywhere, either in banking or oil or anything, until you are in yes. your own calling. Yes, and when I was complaining to people, they were actually telling me that I'm stupid and um, I should be grateful. You've got a good job. You work for a top bank. So at the end of the day, I didn't know what to do. I just stayed and stayed and was unhappy because, you know, eventually I left because I felt like I couldn't take this anymore. I can't live my life in this way. So eventually I left the job and I moved on. Um, and a lot of people, even up to today, they still say, you know, you would have been great now. You would have been top banker. You would have been transferred to this and that if you had stayed. But it was the best thing that I did because I didn't know who I, who I was. I was getting up very early in the morning and working to really late. And I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. It wasn't achieving anything for me. So, and I, I struggled all throughout my life because when I was young, my parents used to say doctor. And, you know, I tried to do science. I have no interest in it as such. So I moved on when I was able to make my own decision. And it's just a trickle effect. I think a lot of people have got similar stories. So the uh, question to me, let's go back to the yeah. uh, initial, or you want to read what the book Yes, uh, somebody said, Deborah Cole said, the same in England, especially when you're black. Um, I'm not sure what, um, the, maybe the same, it's the same thing that you don't, you don't know what you want to do, especially when you're black, the opportunity, but I don't, I think that's another level. Purpose is not part of any syllabus in our institution okay. here in Nigeria. Also, it's not part of our syllabus in England as well. Tatiana, um, the only real life is a life that we get an echo in the ages. The grass can wither, but a person has no right to live without a trace. If he's really a res reasonable person, as always with you, with you, pastor is deep with love and reverence. That's Tatiana. Um, the, my phone doesn't go all the way up. But there are lots of comments. I think there are about 60 comments now. Anyway, so what you wanted to tell, you, you, why you are coming to me, mm. is what is driving me, what was your original? Yes, that was my question. That what is driving you to work so many hours every single day, seven days a week, non-stop? Well, you will understand that, won't you? Mm. 
mm-hmm. that and, I'm working. And I'm still struggling. But my wife is doing the same thing every day. Yes. Yeah. I, I know everyone is doing the same thing in this house. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm aware I'm aware of that. <laughs> so and I'm aware of that. And I think this is almost like a, a different world from okay. from so outside world. For okay. me, it is a different world. <laughs> and today when you were talking about your book and you you, you said about vacation. I was sitting there very quiet listening, but I'm struggling with that because I leave for vacation. You know, I leave to go on vacation and you're saying that working is more important than vacation. Who wants to work? You know, why is working more important? <laughs> you know, but the explanations from the reading, I have come to realize that it's almost like I felt like I need to repent from my mindset and the way that I, I take work to be over the last few years. I feel sad that I have actually so done... So what is driving me? What is driving me? Well, I mentioned it a bit. No, you have to yeah. come closer. When she took me aside in the beginning, I mentioned that you once said that love is one of the biggest motivations ever. What? Love. love. How yeah. love is one of the biggest motivators ever. I mentioned that about um, how it relates to work, that people, they work what, what so much. What she asked you about me? No, yeah, I'm you, not you asked right. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you asked him? Yes, I did. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't ask about him. I just said um about well, me. Yes, I said no, I just I just said my said, dad once said yes. okay. our love is No, that's different. But what do you think? Because she wants to know why is am I always working like this every day? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, what will you say? What is it? I think it's many things. Yeah. But essentially I think it all, all boils down to he knows what he wants to do. He knows how to get there. And he just does what he needs to do to get there. I think it just boils down to that. He has a goal. He's going to do anything to get to the goal. I think it's just that simple. Because it's not strange to you as family. No. It's just the norm. We've always been taught that. Set goals for yourself and reach them. Like since I was a baby. Since like, since like you were three. Mm-hmm. Dad remembers that more. Yeah. But he says that since I was... Three. I don't. I don't remember much. Yeah, my marriage. Okay. When three. did I teach you? When did I teach you about the value of our family? The 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 what slogan or what the motto mm-hmm. of our family? You can't remember the age. I remember the youngest. I remember hearing it. I was four. That's the youngest one I remember okay. hearing. Do it. you remember the place instance? Um, in our old apartment. Okay. I think it was. Um, I was doing some. I was trying to do some home. I think I was learning some letters, okay. but I was having a hard time, and like I was going to like do the letters that I knew how to say, and then my dad's like, "You should focus on the hard letters, because that's the motto of our family. You should do the hard things first, and then do the rest." I, if I remember right, it's a bit fuzzy, but I think it was in our old apartment when I was trying to learn the language, learn like the different letters, and. I think that's also why he's able to work so long because he just he embraces the hard things and for him it's almost natural now okay so where did you learn this you were you were not always like this you know yeah. <clears throat> but you know thank god that at least you i just want you and people who are listening to you to know that they are supposed to be thinking like that it looks, it looks like, it might look like I'm not normal, <clears throat> but even Pastor Joshua just confirmed that to, compared to many people that I'm still not normal. But I, I'm thinking that it is the whole world that is not normal. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm thinking that the way I'm d- d- reasoning and the way I'm thinking, that is the normal thing to do. That is the way to live. And what you want, if you are not living like that, you are the ones who are not normal. Yeah. It's not, for me, I would use extraordinary. I wouldn't say okay. you're not normal. I would just say you're extraordinary. Because you're not doing what normal folks do, or you're not doing things that are common. What you're doing, I don't think it's even up to 1% of the world's population that does it. It's like yes. 0. 0.00005 or something, <laughs> one or something like that. Yeah. So, what am I doing? I think I'm not doing anything special. Really? But yeah, you're the only one doing it. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Make it special. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a question for you, Pastor. It How many people have you met who do what you do? 
It just shows that the whole world have been under some form of deception. In my mind, I am thinking that I might not know them. Maybe I've not met them. But there might be people like that everywhere. I know a few people when you hear their name. People like Bill Gates. People like uh, Steve Jobs, Musk, the guy. Or, Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk and other people like that. So, you know, there are many of them like that all over the world. I'm not sure how old there are many. There's not that many. <laughs> No, they're very many. Uh -huh. For for me, I'm the only thing. For me, I'm not even thinking of any other human being that they are there. When I'm living my own life, I don't even think of who else will I think about. I'm only thinking of those other. For me, in my own mind, they are the only ones existing in the life like me. So I'm only in their level. I'm even not thinking of other human beings. For me, there are no human other human beings. If there are other human beings, there are only other human beings that I'm supposed to help minister to, give a hand to, and help them to come to the place where those people are. So for me, I'm not even compared, the only people I could compare myself to are those ones. So if you say, how many are they? They are not few. I mean, they are few. For me, they are the only one. They are many. No, they're not many, but you, you could only count about 10 I'm yourself. Only thinking, yeah, I'm only counting them. So they are the only ones that I'm counting. I'm not counting millions. I don't even see millions or billions. No, they are not even up to 3,000 who are, at least let's use the billionaires one. They are not up to 3,000 people in the world who are billionaires. So if we, if we use that parameter alone, that's, what percentage is that of 7.5 billion people? No mm. percent. Zero point. It's not <laughs> even up to one. one. <laughs> There's the point. Well, so how many people are this? This are, this are, this are not even up to, to, those are the few people in his world who do yeah. things the way he does. Yeah. So when you look at the vast that's the world I see. For me, the world is that one. Mm -hmm. If I'm not saying seven billion or anything, the seven billion they are there. I know that they're there, but in my sub, in my subconscious, <laughs> that yeah, they're just my. This is my reality. Yeah, but I these are my that. reality. The other people are there for me to help them and deliver them, but they are not in my active reality. My reality mm -hmm. are the people who are doing making things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who wants to have the final words? Because I'm dumbfounded right now. I <laughs> <laughs> so wants to have the final words with the people. For me, I just want you to understand. I'm trying to give you a a, a sincere answer. Why do I do it? I'm surprised that that question even arises. Because that's why I, you know, I was losing my voice. I was tired. I was sleeping. But when that question came. I was f trying to struggle and find out, are you really sincere? Are you really... The only I explanation... The only explanation I could get is that if you really mean what you say, so you are admitting that you don't think. Yes, maybe and I... So then, that's the only way that question could even arise. But, uh, sir, I don't even do how... You already said yourself, I don't do 0.1% of what you do. So, obviously... Uh, evidently, I I don't I'm not thinking in the way that you're thinking. If I'm thinking, maybe I'm not thinking right. If it, it can be called thinking, and that's what I'm trying to develop now because I I have I've seen you every day for the past few weeks. You do this every single day, you know, and I struggle to to understand. And you know, reading this book today about uh, work and the importance of work and it, why is even more important that your work is better than favor work is even more important than favor and um it's just I, I need to know i think this is a good time to actually ask this question because it's a question that i want to ask all the time i think i've asked you before even when i was in london that how do you even become this way and i, I months and months of listening to you online i still couldn't get it i couldn't develop that attitude in me and now i'm here and i'm seeing even hundred times more than I saw when I was watching you online and I'm still thinking that what have you got that I haven't what is in you but you've explained so many things to me I really need to go back and listen to this and I will urge you guys as well that you should please go back and listen to this um, this vlog and watch it over and over again you can see I'm really tired already and also what I've learned right now, my head, my head is actually boiling. I feel like um, 
every day when I feel like I've kind of discovered something and I'm running with it, I'm discovering more things and um, coming to new understanding. So guys, um, I wish um, I wish you luck. I feel like I've got a lot to do, a lot ahead of me that I have been sleeping for the past so many years and I'm just waking up. That's exactly how I feel. And I really need to unlearn a lot of things and learn new things. And I'm glad I'm in this environment to do so. So that's one of the reasons why I really want to share uh, the daily experience here with you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, time this evening and I know it's pretty late. So um, have a good night and I will see you tomorrow. So bye from Ukraine. Take care.